Hey folks, this is Kalani. The War Within gives solo content players far more options for how to gear up, but also allows you to get much higher item levels in general. You can quite easily get up to item level 619, and there are some options to go even higher than that. That's the equivalent of heroic raid gear, and you can even snag some mythic gear along the way. All of these options can also be done all by yourself, so we're going to go over every gearing option for a solo content player, show you how you can get up to item level 619 and even further without having to take part in any kind of group content. Now before we jump in be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. We're going to break this down step by step to ensure no one gets lost along the way so you can follow this video even if you are a brand new level 80 who hasn't really done any gearing up yet. Our first goal will be to get to about item level 590. One of the first things you're going to want to get comfortable with are the various weekly activities and the caches that they reward. The most important one is the World Soul Weekly Quest that you can find in Dornagal just outside of the inn. You can choose how you would like to complete this weekly quest, so just do whichever activity you prefer or whichever would be the fastest for you. You'll want to get this one done every week for the cache, but also for the Fractured Spark of Omens. More about that in just a moment. Then we also have the Theatre Troop in Dornagal, the Awakening the Machine event in the Ringing Deeps, the Spreading the Light event in Hallowfall, and the Pact Quest down in Ash Kehet. In addition to those four events, you'll have two Special Assignment World Quests each week. All of these activities will reward you with a cash upon completion. The first two caches that you earn will have a piece of 584 gear in them, so you can get some quick and easy gear upgrades from getting at least two caches per week. And then the first four caches you open will also contain a restored coffer key. If you want to maximize your gearing options as a solo content player, you will want to get these four keys every single week. So I would encourage you to get four caches minimum per week. It doesn't really matter which activities you do besides that World Soul Weekly Quest, so if you're only interested in the first four rewards, do the events which will be the fastest or most efficient for you. Personally, I do the World Soul Weekly Quest, the Theatre Troop, the Spreading the Light event, and then the Ashkahet Pact Quest. Those are typically the quickest in my experience. Completing any weekly events and earning caches beyond those first four will still reward you with carved crests and the rep gains from completing the events as well, so it just depends depends on how much time you have and what you want to prioritize, but you won't be getting any large gear upgrades past the first four caches you earn each week. Now something new in the War Within is that we now have an open world weekly vault row. Completing the weekly events will unlock rewards in this row, which will give you some item level 584 rewards to look forward to on reset day. So you can join in on the fun on Tuesday or Wednesday at the Great Vault to get some free loot, and all you have to do is complete some of the weekly events. Now two pieces of gear per week is all fine and dandy, but we're going to need a little bit more than that to get any kind of decent item level. Thankfully there are a whole bunch of ways to fill in those gaps. World Quests can offer you some easy early gear, they can reward you with up to item level 571 Adventurer gear, which can be upgraded up to 593, so they're going to help you gear up if you are a freshly dinged level 80, and they also have some good upgrade potential too. Rare monsters can help fill in some gaps too, they drop up to item level 577 gear, so it's not a bad idea to kill any rares you come across. You'll also get some reputation, so that's a nice bonus as well. You can also queue into heroic dungeons if that's something you're interested in, it's not strictly solo content but it is super easy to queue in, and the dungeons are very easy themselves, you can get yourself some 580 loot for your trouble. So there are quite a few ways to get your hands on some adventurer gear, it just depends on what you would rather do. All of this gear can be upgraded up to 593, so it's a good start to your gearing adventures. Another source of very easy early gear is the world boss. Everyone can kill the world boss once per week for a chance at some 603 item level gear, which can be upgraded all the way to 619, so there is some great upgrade potential here as well. You can find the world boss by looking for the skull icon world quest in one of the four new zones. Now to upgrade any of this gear to unlock its true potential, you're going to need weathered and carved crests. You can get weathered crests for a lot of open world content, like world quests and as part of some world events, you can also get them from running heroic dungeons and killing LFR bosses. 
But the easiest way to pick up some weathered crests is to just fly through these glowing orbs in the sky. You can find these in every zone, from what I can tell. I usually fly around the Ringing Deeps or Hallowfall and find a bunch of them, but you can find them in any Kaz Algar zone. Whenever you fly through them, you'll get some residence crystals and one or two weathered crests. So you don't have to do anything except a little bit of flying around, and you can cap your weathered crests very quickly. This is how I've capped weathered crests on multiple characters, just chilling and flying. It's great if you don't want to jump into heroic dungeons, but still want to be able to upgrade your gear or get some higher item level crafted gear made. Weathered Crests will allow you to upgrade your gear up to item level 593. To go further than that, we are going to need Carved Crests. Carved Crests are also quite easy to get. You'll be getting quite a lot of them if you're doing the various weekly events we mentioned earlier. Each cache will reward you with five crests each. Killing the world boss rewards you with a handful as well, and you can also get carved crests from running delves on tier 6 or 7, which will become even more important in just a moment. With your carved crests in hand, you can upgrade any veteran gear up to item level 606, which gives you a great foundation for pretty much anything else you could want to do at endgame. So by collecting veteran gear and upgrading it using your crests, you can get up to item level 606 quite comfortably. Now there is a way to get yourself set up with item level 590 gear very quickly by using crafting. You can craft this stuff yourself very easily if you have the professions, or just send in some crafting orders at the crafting order clerks. To get up to item level 590 crafted gear, we're going to need to use enchanted weathered crests. These come from enchanters, so you can make them if you're an enchanter, or you'll need to put in a crafting order for these as well. You're going to need a nascent weathered crest, which can be purchased from enchanting supply vendors in Dornagal, and that will cost you 30 weathered crests. The other materials are just enchanting mats, you can disenchant your spare gear for them if you have enchanting, or you can buy them up on the auction house. With your weathered crests in hand, it's time to get some gear crafted. When you craft a piece of gear or put in a work order, you can add the enchanted crest in the optional crafting boxes at the bottom. This will allow you to get those cheaper blue crafting recipes up to item level 590, which is kind of crazy. So for every 30 weathered crests you spend, you can get one piece of 590 gear. Right now we have a seasonal cap of 450 weathered crests, which would allow you to purchase and create 15 enchanted crests to make 15 pieces of 590 gear. That's pretty much a full set of gear with some left over. So if you have some very low item level pieces of gear that are just dragging you down, or you want to skip over the entire first leg of the gearing up process, using enchanted crests to craft 590 gear can be very quick and easy. All you would need to do is fly through those orbs we mentioned earlier to collect up some crests, then put in the crafting orders. All it takes is a little bit of gold and you can go from a freshly dinged level 80 to full 590 gear in very little time. Crafted gear can go so much further than just 590 though, you can very easily get up to 619 crafted gear as a solo player. You can technically upgrade it further than that, up to 636, but you won't have quite as much access to the required gilded crests. This higher tier of crafted gear is a lot more time-gated due to the required Sparks of Omens. You can get a Spark of Omens by combining two Fractured Sparks of Omens together, and these Fractured Sparks come from the important weekly quest in Dornagal. You're looking for the spiky blue quest, which is usually just outside of the inn, the World Soul weekly quest that we talked about earlier. Completing this quest gives you a weekly cash, but also a Fractured Spark of Omens. Now if you miss a weekly quest at any point, you'll be able to get your missing fractures from completing endgame content like dungeons, delves, raids, PvP, and maybe even from those weekly event caches. So it's really easy to pick up any fractured sparks you may have missed in the past. Combine your fractured sparks together and we're ready to do some crafting. If you have your own crafting professions, you can craft your own gear very easily. Just find and unlock the recipe, gather all of the materials, slap your sparks in its slot, and craft away. If you don't have any crafting professions, you will need to make a crafting order. Pop by the crafting order clerks in Dornagal, search for the item we want made, gather up all of the materials, find someone to craft it in trade chat, and send it off as a personal order. You will probably need to use rank 3 materials to get the rank 5 crafting result, which is why I recommend that everyone should look into setting up their own crafting professions. You can often use rank 2 materials in your own concentration to make crafting items so much cheaper. That's what I do, and I 
I've saved myself so much gold already. The difference between using rank 3 materials and rank 2 materials and concentration for some of these crafts is literally 100,000 gold. You could save yourself 100,000 gold per crafting item you want made just by setting your professions up once. Now this spark crafted gear starts at item level 606 if you get it crafted at rank 5, so it's very easy to get. We'll get one additional spark every two weeks as well, so you can get another piece of 606 gear every two weeks if you keep up with your weekly quests, and you don't even have to do any end game content. Just that one weekly quest and you can craft 606 gear. But the real power of this gear lies in its ability to be upgraded. You can increase the item level of spark crafted gear up to 619 by using an enchanted runed crest, or up to 636 by using an enchanted gilded crest. These would usually not be readily available to solo content players, but the war within has changed a lot about gear progression, especially for solo players. So both of these crests can be obtained by everyone now thanks to the new delve system. Delves offer you a way to gear up way more than we've ever seen before. You can very comfortably get up to item level 619 without any weird tricks and without jumping into any group content. In the past, I have encouraged solo content players to jump into things like looking for raid, to fill up the weekly vault to get higher tiers of crests as a kind of workaround, to let you upgrade gear further and get those crafted gear upgrades. With Delves, you don't need to do that anymore. Delves are like mini dungeon instances. They can have a variety of objectives and they all end in a boss fight with a treasure room. What makes Delves so different is that they can be done all by yourself and you even have a companion to keep you company and help you progress through your runs. So no groups to join or make, you don't have to worry about other players slowing you down or going too fast, you can go at your own pace and take breaks whenever you want. Now this video is all about gear, so how can we use Delves to get some huge gear upgrades? There are two important factors here. The first is that to get the good gear rewards, you will need to run a bountiful Delve. Every day, four Delves are going to be bountiful. They have a different icon on your world map, so double check which Delves are bountiful for the day, and if your goal is gear, these are the ones you're going to want to run. The real gear upgrades come from the bountiful chest at the end of the run, which will be locked. To unlock it, you need a restored coffer key. You can get four of these per week by completing four of the weekly activities and obtaining caches like we talked about earlier. You can also combine key shards together to create more keys, and you can get these from world quests or by taking part in the world soul event. To take part in a world soul event, you'll need a radiant echo, which drops from the locked bountiful chests. So the more bountiful delves you run, the more radiant echoes you can get, which will let you run more bountiful delves. So it's a nice little cycle that can increase your gearing potential each week. So the big gear upgrades are from bountiful chests and restored coffer keys, but the main other factor here is the tier of the delve you are running. When you walk up to a delve, you'll have to pick a tier or difficulty level. The tiers go all the way up to 11 and get harder the further you go, but the rewards cap out at tier 8. So that's the goal for every solo player right now, clearing tier 8 delves. If you can manage that, you'll be able to get a piece of item level 603 gear for every key you spend. This gear is also guaranteed. Every key you spend will result in a piece of 603 gear. Now it's not guaranteed to be good gear, and you can get 5 cloaks in a row, but at least it's not just a chance for gear to drop, and you aren't rolling against anyone. It's important to note that you don't have to wait until tier 8 to start using your keys though. Your gear upgrades from climbing delve tiers are very linear, so if you can only clear tier 5 delves, you can still use your keys there and unlock the chests, you can still get big gear upgrades, and those will help you work through tier 6, 7, and finally tier 8. So don't be afraid to spend some keys at lower tiers if it's going to help you get some gear to reach those higher tiers in the end. Completing delves will also unlock rewards in your world weekly vault row. The higher the tier of delve you complete, the better your rewards are going to be. If you can clear tier 8 delves or higher, you'll start seeing item level 616 rewards in your weekly vault. That's actually better than normal raid vault loot, and it's better than most heroic raid vault loot. It's only 7 item levels off the best mythic plus vault loot. This is kinda crazy good, you can get some very high item levels from doing delves right now. 
But it gets better. Tier 8 Bountiful Delves will also reward you with Ruined Crests. These are in the Bountiful boxes at the end of the run, not the locked ones. So you can get the Ruined Crests even without spending your keys, which means running Bountiful Delves is still worthwhile even if you don't have a restored coffer key to use. With there being 4 Bountiful Delves every single day, that means you can get 8 Ruined Crests per day if you can complete them all. You can use these ruined crests in two ways. You can upgrade your 616 volt gear up to 619 to give that an extra little boost. You can upgrade your 603 delve gear up to 619 as well using carved and ruined crests. And then you can also use them to craft those enchanted rune crests we talked about earlier. That will allow you to upgrade any spark crafted gear up to item level 619 as well. So Bountiful Delves rewarding you with ruined crests opens up so many other upgrade paths for you. If you can get your delve runs up to tier 8, you'll have a very easy pathway to item level 619 gear, both from the delves themselves and upgrading that gear, but also from spark crafted gear upgrades. But that's not even everything. When you complete Bountiful Delves, you have a chance to get a special delve map. When used, these maps guarantee your next high tier delve will have an extra treasure chest with even better loot. On tier 8, that extra treasure trove contains item level 610 gear, which starts at 1 of 6 on the hero track and can be upgraded all the way to 626, giving you even more upgrade potential. These special treasure troves will also contain Gilded Crests, the highest tier of crests available in the season. These typically only come from Mythic Plus 9 Keystone Dungeons or from the raid on Mythic, so they're usually reserved for the high-end group content players. Gilded Crests can be used to upgrade any of the 610 gear you get up to 626 or upgrade your 616 volt gear up to 626 as well. Eventually, you may be able to collect enough to start upgrading your spark crafted gear to the highest item levels as well, though that might not be for a while. The enchanted gilded crest will set you back 90 gilded crests right now, which isn't really within the scope of this video. So you can get gilded crests as a solo content player, but spending 90 of them on a single piece of gear isn't exactly reliable or what I would consider efficient gearing. But that option is there and can take your crafted gear all the way up to item level 636. And then as a last note, you should also keep an eye on the current weekly events. For example, when recording this, it is TBC Time Walking. This event has a quest to complete some time walking activities that rewards you with a piece of normal raid loot, which can go up to item level 613. And there's also a quest to complete the Time Walking Raid, which rewards you with a piece of 610 item level gear. And every Time Walking Raid boss can drop item level 597 gear too, and they are super easy to kill. So this week is a great example of how weekly events can give you even more options for easy gear. But that's all of the ways you can gear up as a solo content player, and how you can very reliably get up to item level 619, with some options for going even further. How do you feel about solo content players having access to higher item level gear as well as the higher tiers of crests. What do you think of delves from what you've played so far and do you see yourself hopping into any other forms of content or just sticking to what's available to clear solo? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to all of our members here on YouTube. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you're interested in supporting the channel you can find links in the description or click the join button just below the video. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful in any way make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you're always kept up to date. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.